wake up, God damn it. Welcome to Market Cast with Unk and Market Monk. Morning, P. How was your week? Okay. Uh, yeah, a uh, week was pretty good. I am uh, had some flooding in my house when they, they changed my roof and left it bare for a night and it stormed. So a bunch of water came in. So I got to deal with all that. But uh, uh, market wise was good. Um, mainly actually ended up focused on healthcare for the most part. But then um, Roku and Twillow were really strong for me. So just... Um, you know, some good reads on some familiar, from some familiar names. Nice. Yeah, I'm, it's funny you say that. Here, let me get my page back. Um, <coughs> familiar names for sure. Um, I was pretty light last week on trades, but the names were familiar. Um, SoFi, Laser, Invis, Stitch Fix, Square, and Piton were my, um, <laughs> were my pools that I traded. So, I mean, I'm talking stuff that, I don't think any of those um, we haven't been talking about the entire time we've been together. Um, so, it's, you know, staying in the same circles. Um, I wouldn't say sizing down or, or trading a little less, but only trading when the setups are there. Um, and and to be honest with you right now, kind of swinging a little bit. Um, smaller positions. Uh, really, yeah, really I, where um, I'm making my money at right now, to be honest I, with you. I had a, a share position I didn't really, you know, think much of. Uh, it was Carvana, and I just kept I kept half of it from is that move from like I had it around twelve that moved to sixteen, and I kept half of it. It you know it dipped down under fifteen, but um, all I was looking for we had that line above at that nineteen. Mine's nineteen forty five. I think yours is thereabouts, and I was like, you know, I'm just looking for a test of that. That's it. And then it just, you know, blew right through it, um, got out, last of it, uh, like 23 and change, went higher, obviously, but, uh, you know, whatever, that's fine. But, yeah, that was one, um, when we talk about staying on something, that was that was certainly it. And it was just funny to see people on Twitter talking Carvana who, you know, were adding in the 20s <laughs> and acting like they invented it. Yeah, uh, 2194 is that line I have on Carvana. I actually bumped that video this week because um, it was one of those those ones I made back in January. Um, but this is a seven or eight dollar play for us before we got the this this run back here. Um, what at the end of January, um, just the 14 bucks that 100 percent run to there. So to watch it continue all the way here uh, is definitely it's definitely interesting. But yeah, pe I mean, people aren't even weren't even on it till 15. There, there's um there's actually a pretty good lesson here with that one where um i think you'll see it with piton too and, and some others that you know the stocks that just are in the dirt and then they beat they beat on earnings or they have some kind of news that that moves them and so for carvana it was that earnings and um when they don't just give it all back that's a good sign that you could, you know, it, it could really start moving because I mean, they are heavily shorted and, um, you know, the options start to get active on them. So you, you know, you will see that, that, that move higher. And uh, especially if, if we've got levels above like lemonade, same deal, um, they're likely going to make a move back, back to those levels. It start it, you get close enough to it. It starts acting like a magnet. And then from there, sometimes they just flat out, squeeze like we saw with uh with carvana there yeah no carvana is a good example if they're not going out of business and i kind of talked about it with like a tupperware a little bit yeah. more. but um if they're not going out of business uh kind of look at the chart and the you other know, chart was at four hundred dollars i mean that's not a realistic target um but but your last high even 50 might might be a more re or 57 46 something in there that might be a little re more realistic and when you start getting down to seven or eight dollars um your, your ratio is dramatically in your favor for that just to get some of that back. And 21 is halfway to that $50 yeah. mark I just pulled out on the chart. So it's not like we're even some big relief on the chart. 
Um, but that's a pretty big move on the equity side um, if you were going to take a take a chance in a company. Um, and there's a ton of these out there right now. Um, kind of seeing, we kind of seen the A plus, you know, the good diamond blue chip, you know, five star stocks kind of all take off from August to November or uh, August to April. Someone told you that. Um, but you're seeing the other end of the stick, like the really crappy, really, um, the, the pipe dream ones, the super growth ones, you know, the, super, yeah, the you're yeah. seeing that other end, the far end come back now. Um, the, the middle kind of uh, has been a little more slower, a little more methodical. Uh, but it's just odd to me to see now that's where we're going back to is the guys that are, yeah, like Piton and Carvana, you know, they're, they're uh, money burners. Yeah, and like, um, <laughs> and then on the, on the, the large cap side, um, like Roku yeah. is, you know, is, is a good example. You already had Netflix make that, you know, make that huge move. Um, Roku followed it a little, but, you know, kept floundering. Finally, you know, busted through. I had this line at 6024 and it um, topped out. I cleared the last of it at $74 on Friday. So um, that is a huge move. And, but even then you zoom out and it, you know, it's still, you know, probably that's about half of what I think it could end up doing. Um, so I, you know, I think about, Yep. 110 or 120 or something like that so, could be a place where Roku goes. Roku weekly's chart is exactly what I'm looking for, to be honest, at this point in time. Um, yeah. Know, some, something that, that had that low in January and then respects my level here in, in July. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for. Higher low, higher low on the bigger time frame uh, with plenty of range. You know, that's, that's the 52 um, to, to 70 is a great trade. It's just really yeah. just playing inside the zone like that. Yeah, work share side too, and that's always that's always the best combo for us. Yeah, no, we're getting a lot more of those. I mean, not that I trade like an upstart or a Carvana. I mean, but those are getting me back into the pitons of the world, and then maybe the I mean CCL might be a little checked out now, but stuff like that where you're just like, all right, I know the fair market value of this stock, and we are a hundred percent if we get there. Um, yeah, I just, just I'm getting more confidence in that kind of stuff going forward. Yeah, yeah, for it's sure. Really looking good. Um, got some numbers this week. Um, how you feel about them? You know, the Fed's coming back in a little CPI um, Tuesday Wednesday combo. Um, uh, yeah, I um, I I think that the those have the potential to give kind of a a jolt to the market, but maybe not a sustained move. Uh, I mean, I'm still just sort of in that frame of mind until you know until i until i see that change um there's there was a time months ago where you know uh, numbers would come out and be unfavorable and you know spy would drop one percent pre-market and end the day down three and a half percent and when i just um i'll believe it when i see it on um on a move like that so i think um this will be one of those weeks where um you just don't want to really chase the pre-market move on any of those number releases. Um, anything with FOMC, you know, Pac always says, just, just don't trade it. And you know what that means? I mean, people are going to still trade it, but if you, if you go in large with short expiration options, you're just, that's just gambling. Um, it's just too volatile, but, uh, but there are definitely some opportunities to, to scalp some quick, quick moves in there. Um, I just, I just think it's gonna, it's gonna be hard to just change the, um, just flip the script and go back into a sustained bear market right now. I don't know that there's enough um, in just this data or these meetings to, uh, to really do that. But, uh, but it could definitely pull us back some. Yeah, I think uh, the the first report with the CPI will probably move the market more than the the Feds will move the market. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm with you on like the markets. I had to say it different, but the markets had enough of the enough of the shit. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's I, I assume we're going to get the quarter point. Um, so I, I think it will just work yeah. right through that like it didn't happen. Um, if we do pivot or pause, um, I think the, the move is the dramatic moves to the upside. Um, mm -hmm. not, not down anymore. Uh, but again, CPI is going to be the one that gives you the most range. Um, 
the market yeah the market's just kind of done like i kind of talked about last week where who's selling uh, i think we were talking to video uh, but that's just the market in general at this point like if you're if just go through the psychology of it like if, if you held something and it was down you know i don't know 60 percent and you just got half of that back and it's a hundred percent of year over year or it's 150 percent of year over year yeah. for you you're not selling you've held that long so there's just like not a lot of sellers in general out there um at this point in time um so uh, uh, and, yeah and, and a and, lot of people have money we're back to that where people do have you know they're sitting on their money a little bit um so i think it just kind of it's going to slowly come bleed back into the market um yeah, yeah. Yes. And there's um like there's big Tesla FOMO and um you know AI I think you know we we uh, yeah I think it's going to be a, a theme of our talk in the second half is just that um this seems to be gearing up for another move up um and then it's just about which names are going to move and which is the best setup but um yeah the AI AI bubble has not popped um I think that still has a lot of room um especially as companies beyond just the the buzzwords and hype but figure out you know real world scenarios to to use it and uh, like chegg stands out just i just know that business because i worked in it but um it's like okay this is how we're actually going to use ai and this is um you know going to change our business and and that the reality of that i think um will start will start to come out on the software side. So, um, so I think that that can give a lot of the SAS names a, a little bit of a, a little bit of a boost. Um, and, uh, and those to me, I mean, those are just kind of all about the range, it's, uh, you know, snow pulled back significantly, but look at where it's coming from. It's not really going back to one thirty anytime soon. So it's all about just, um, you know, don't chase things, but have a level on a pullback and then, don't go the other way and try to short it when it pulls back. I mean, you know, you look for the upside. So uh, I think that's one of the big lessons lately. Yeah, you definitely don't want to. You got to figure out what the trade is. I mean, you can't, you can't like start, you can't do the hold forever when you didn't get the best entry, right? Like, you kinda, yeah, you got to yeah. gotta figure out the trade. Like, sometimes it's just a scalp because there is, there is some range there, but you don't really want to hang out long. Um, because it is overextended a little bit. Uh, like, yeah, that, and that, that and that's happens. where the the market breadth. I mean, we, we've been on this, I think, for about a month now. Where, uh, yeah, it's you know, it's not, it's pretty wide. I mean, the the big seven or whatever, you know, are are far away from everything else. But uh, again, the ways that resolves, it's not just that the big seven just plummet, it's that the other stuff does better. And that's what we were just talking about with. Roku and Twillo and um, Net and, you know, D-Dog and Crowd and, you know, all them, like they, they um, you know, can start to break it back into a zone where we used to trade them. And when you have a, a chart retracing that familiar territory, it's like um, there are, I don't even know how to say it. There are shares up there, right? I mean, there's, there's a reason our system works. There's a reason that these levels, you know, come right back into play like the way that they do. Um, the stock just falls back into a previous pattern, and uh, and that's what we're after. Yeah, yeah. And you said just finding what's going to make that happen, whether it's the market. You know, sometimes the market just turns on, and everything moves. Yeah. Everything just kind of levels up a little bit. Sometimes it's a slower grind. Right now, like, I mean, it's pretty defined that the, you just need a reason. I mean, that's why we play around a little bit around ER or. You know the sector rotation you're seeing it with ai right now like if you give the market a reason it'll hold on to it for a while um but it's just not gonna like space stocks is a good example those charts are great um they really want to move to the upward direction because they're so beat down but they're, they're not going to do it without a catalyst like we need some reason um, i don't know aliens landing or something might do it but um yeah we, <laughs> they need some reason to move and you see that like gold stock, gold and silver stocks, kind of the same way right now. Um, all had a pretty healthy six eight months, um, but they're, yeah. ready, they're ready to level up. They just haven't done it um, currently. Uh, right, yeah, and, and that's why, like you see it in my my strategy. I talk about with those is, um, I mean, don't don't go trying to trade weekly calls on gold. 
um, you know, you need time. The be- and the best thing for time is shares. And beyond that, it's, um, you know, options that aren't going to shake you out after a bad week. So you look out to January and I'd say even, you know, March at this point, um, a, a leap is technically a year. I um, consider a leap anything seven, you know, seven to nine months fits the bill for me just because of how they, uh, you know, just because of how they move. And then you know, the other thing I'll, I'll say about the the market too, like everyone's seen my focus on healthcare stocks lately. Um, and those, those demonstrate a kind of flight to safety that is different than what we saw during the, you know, the lows of the bear market, which where the safety at that point was to short things or to just get on the sideline. Now they just, you see these intraday rotations into, um, into healthcare. And I think you're about to see it with consumer defensive a little more as well. And, um, and that's seen as, um, you know, kind of a, a safe place to park their money. You get these one, 2% moves and UNH and stocks like that. Um, and those are great on the option side. So um, that's kind of one of the reasons I'm, I've been emphasizing emphasizing that. I think, you know, with options, big lesson I, I always talk about is you want a 1% move to actually matter. That's the best kind of options trade where you don't, you don't need a stock to move 7, 8, 12%, you know, for the, the calls to do well. That's, um, that's not an easy move to get, but, but, you know, these, these healthcare pullbacks and then they grind up all day. Uh, you can do really well, well with that. So uh, that's what, one of the things I've been trying to emphasize lately. Man, if we ever have like a podcast, like where we're on screen and stuff, you're going to have to wear a suit and I'm going to be wearing a hoodie. Cause yeah. uh, we, we definitely, <laughs> we definitely look at the market. I mean, we look at just different things in the same market, um, but it works together. But I've yeah. noticed that these stocks under a dollar, like these crappy ones, AMRS stand out a little bit. What do we follow? Um, they're all getting yeah. relief and those daily bio news, um, man, that they, they're staying active. So, so the money's there, you know, the retail side, stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. really here. It just, it, it seems like it, it wants to come and make its money, um, as me and Goose talk about from six 30 to seven, you know, and kind of be done by seven o'clock every day. Uh, they're, they're definitely active, uh, but no one's, um, no one's swinging in this market. Let's just put it that. There's not a lot of those swing long-term swing yeah. thesis traders. Where are those guys at on Twitter, right? Like they're not existent on the social Well, And this market. is uh, the AMRS example. That's a good example of the sector focus. I said chemicals and I was looking at, you know, DD and Dow, which both did great. Um, there's this other one, CC, that popped off large. So it was definitely, a, you know, chemicals were definitely hot at the time. And then even AMRS, you know, which I, I had said is, you know, it's kind of tough to trade down here. All of a sudden it makes a, you know, a 20%, a 20% move. So um, um, that's, um, that's been great for us too. And uh, that's what I like about our approach. I talk healthcare, I'm thinking of LLY and UNH and you're like, you know, Hey, take a look at NVAX. I look at it <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, holy shit. Look at the, look at this. And, you know, I just look at all the, the bullish calls there. So um so yeah, the sector plus market cap uh, just works really well in our approach. So I expect that to that to continue. Yeah, there's a clove in there too that uh, it's not all good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get spy out of the way here. I I yeah. usually check this before hand and I didn't, so I apologize about that. But um, we got thirty one ninety nine and twenty five eighty two, so twenty we'll call it twenty five and thirty two. Um, I had thirty two and twenty. You had thirty four and twenty two. That's eh, pretty even. I mean, I nailed the top. If anything, yeah. I, I get a win on that. But um, the, we were pretty close on the range. Didn't really get the bottom we both seen last week. No, it's no follow through of that direction. Um. No just been really, really no interesting. appetite for it. No, and um, I actually, I mean, the 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 better short was QQQ a couple of those days. Um, you know, particularly off, you know, off its high. Um, and that's uh, that's actually well. After we talk about spy, I want to talk about a pattern I've noticed with that. But um, uh, yeah, just um, did not did not get the pullback. Um, 
part of it could be the strength in oil and healthcare, I guess, but uh, it's a good sign, I think, for, for a further move up. Yeah, I mean, we say pretty rangy. I mean, it took the whole week to break through 430, so obviously it's pretty, there's, there's something there. Um, yeah. The, you know, the 420 crowd kind of got ran over, didn't hang out there too long. Uh, but I, I think we, I mean, I don't think we can just keep moving at the pace we have the last three weeks. That's a good way. No, and it, it was um, it was the worst week for those uh, those SPX zero DTE call buyers. Um, it's the worst week they've had in a while, where they just didn't get they didn't get those those sustained intraday recoveries that they look for. Um, because you know, the, like they they don't buy those calls in the money; um, no. they're buying them out of the money for two hundred dollars. And if you don't get that quick move. Um, those collapse very fast. So, uh, so yeah, bad week for the gamblers, but um, uh, good week for the patient people. Yeah, the only one I'm watching, I mean, I really don't watch Spy even, but the only one I really keep an eye on is SQQQ, the S1. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty much not interesting at this point in time. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, what do you have? What do you got? What do you got going in this week? It's a big week. So. Uh, let me uh, yeah, let me check. All right, I'll cheat. I want to check on a strike real quick. Uh, no, I'm not saying that yet. So I am. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna stick with that. Um, I'm gonna say four thirty, four fifty. Can I put a fifty cent spot in? You want four thirty, four fifty? Yeah. Okay, I got you. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna say four twenty two on the downside. Four twenty two. Is that the same shit? That's the same thing you had last week. You just added yeah. fifty cents. All right. Yeah. So sideways. Are you saying they're saying some sideways action? Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm seeing, and then um, I just think the the big move will be, at, you know, pull back in recovery, um, which would be a big, you know, from the 420s up to that high would be pretty good. So, so run down your week then, because okay, so we're opening it at we're opening it at 4:30 right here, like that's where we are <laughs> right now. So run me down Monday. Monday's gonna be, but what do you got? Run me through the week. Okay, um, I I think we pull back a bit okay. on Monday and um, and then recover into um, into the data release, uh, and then I think we get a jolt down from that, and then like a bigger jolt down, and then recover again into the Fed. The Fed move is volatile, but then positive, and we run it up into the end of the week. Okay. So I think we kind of we kind of pull back a couple times. Uh, one big jolt down, and then we ramp up into the close of the week. That's okay. that's my my blueprint for now. Okay, I'm gonna go. This is the one where the market likes. No, the market either doesn't react or likes what it, what is said. So I'm gonna go 427 on the downside, just five bucks higher than you. And then okay. I'm gonna go 436 on the upside. Nice. I'll take, take about 50 more. So I'm just I'm just looking for a higher hold and not really much of a pullback. Um, and if it is, it will just be Monday. Um, and then the, both the numbers act as accelerants to the end of the week. Um, you know, Thursday might be flat. We might get a flat day in there. You know, maybe, maybe people sit on their hands Wednesdays until that old 1130 we always talk about. But, um, yeah, I think, I think this is, I think this is the, the week where, uh, there's no coming back from where we do establish them. I mean, cause we're kind of at levels, right? It's, like uh, like I said with Roku, you can see it here on Spy. Like we're back to being at a level. Uh, I think this yeah. is the week where we we just get on the other side of that, which means we'll have pullback, you know, in a in a month or so, or in a three, two or three weeks, we'll come back and check down to this level. But I think this is the uh, this is the week where we really get going, um, and hopefully that that's good for the small cap. That's where I'm at. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then on the, like the, the QQQ side, 
Um, yeah, th- you said you were talking. That man, that 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 three hundred four. That was it. That was the that was the spot. Yeah, that's it, a- you know it, it it like it ran through it, pulled back, did it one more time, and then was you know has just been gone ever since then. Uh, back in March, so um, yeah, just incredible move there and um and just by the nature of the move it made i mean it it kind of has the most room to pull to back. pull down and then um you know dia i've been on i mean everybody saw me flip bullish on john deere um and that that's always something to take note of i don't really flip flop on stocks you know I, I i i'll stick with the side until i really see it the situation kind of fundamentally change and so so dia i think kind of has the most room up and then spy sort of splits the difference between the two because it kind of incorporates incorporates both of them yeah i don't know sqqq got the most room up (laughs) well yeah yeah true right (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah i don't really um excuse me i don't really hang out in too many etfs uh ones i watch mostly are commodity driven so um, I'm just, yeah, just, just yeah. haven't been it so far this first quarter or two. Um, yeah, the SQs, I mean, if we start to get down to, you know, 18, 19 bucks on that, um, you know, no reason to plant a flag, but, uh, that's a good spot for a starter for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just, if any really negative catalyst comes out in the market, it's a good place to go plan a little bit. Just don't yeah, like you, do you uh, do you mess with VIX at all? I don't no, really. No, no. Yeah, no, I don't really. It's just not I, again. I, I'm the one I traded before you was like Gush, right? Uh, like that and Drip. Like those are. I mean, that's. They're, they're, I've always been commodity driven, and then I mean, obviously after meeting you, um, probably even more so, right? Like, yeah, because um, we you you have a ton of them, but um. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little crypto. I know you said you wanted to talk that um, in the pregame. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, time, so so this, um, I mean, obviously this was like, uh, you know, alt, altcoin Armageddon. Um, the, the, I mean, the, it's kind of simple. They, they get a bunch of them got called out specifically as uh, securities. And, um, you know, that led a lot of, a lot of exchanges to, to drop them. And, you know, I mean, one thing I can say about crypto is if, um, you know, your average retail buyer can't just open up their, their Robinhood app or their Coinbase, well, Coinbase is a bad example because they're fighting it, but, you know, they can't just open up their app and buy uh, Cardano or, you know, ones like that. Um, th- those are in big trouble because the the DeFi crypto market, those um all those weird, those weird coins of Pepe and I don't know, like uh, Ascoin or whatever. Like, like those are not really on the main exchanges. They're sort of like pump and dump in the, these DeFi exchanges. These crypto projects that want to be, you know, taken um, seriously. The actual altcoins, like, like they they have to be on exchanges, or just people can't buy them. And and um, I'm not going to say they're going to go to zero, but they could go down another 75, 80% from here. Uh, so that's one part of the story. And, um, you know, that we'll see how that gets resolved. But the other part of it is that um, people like the, those altcoins, it wasn't like people are selling it and then buying Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin kind of floundered a bit this weekend too. And um, so I think it, it had more to do with what market makers were doing and just pulling out all the liquidity on those altcoins and it didn't really replace it with anything. So um, dangerous time in that space. A lot of big stuff this week with um, Binance and Coinbase and, you know, news can drop overnight at any time and the news is likely to be likely to be bad. Uh, So that's one, that's one side of it. The other side of it, though, is that I don't think you can just pile in and short crypto stocks and think that you're going to just make a killing on it. Um, they do, you know, they do, you know, push back against the selling. And all that's happening there is that they're really responding to 
levels that we have in these pivots. So, um, so I think you just want to be, you want to be careful in a crowded trade and it's a very crowded short. So, um, you know, for that reason, I think you have to just trade them kind of short, short term off levels. If you got in MSTR puts back when I said to do it, you're still fine. I think that's going to break down, um, you know, anything over 310 um, into the, you know, the 320s, that was a great short entry and we're still well above that. But, uh, but to short it from 280 to 200, yeah, it can happen. But um, I think you just got to be, you got to be careful because those, um, those do like to rally and it's just, it's a function of so many put buyers. Um, they're easy to, easy to shake out. So that's what's happening in that space to me. Yeah. I, you know, I, how I feel about the pet rock. That's for sure. Um, not my favorite <laughs> to trade those coins or anything like that, but, um, <laughs> the stocks, um, is where I really agree with you on. I mean, I, I mean, I'm always, always trading one direction. I, I don't trade the other direction, but I really agree with you on only trading the upside on those. Um, yeah, just because they have such good range and like the worse the day or the news, the better the range is usually on the relief. Um, I've been playing stuff like, you know, Riot, Mara, SOS and all that since, I mean, probably two, two and a half years now. And, and when they have a bad day um, or bad news, uh, the relief is better than the, the Bitcoin runs usually uh, because they're instant. Uh, you'll have stuff drop $1.50 and, and come right back or, you know, something drop, you know, 25% and, and make most of it up in two days. Um, right now, I like I like where the crypto charts are. And I, I mean, they need the, a little bit of relief. Um, but, you know, the Mara Riot, um, and even coin right now are all in great spots. And then the, the little ones like Hut and Hive, um, they, they just need the Bitcoin 30K euphoria back. But as, as we lose, what, 20% or 30% of Bitcoin's value over here over the next month, which is kind of what it's looking like from the 28s down to the 20s. Um, yeah. You're, those aren't losing the value at all. They're kind of, I mean, Mars hanging around 10 Hive is hanging around three. Uh, Riot doesn't want to give up eleven. So, so that's what I'm watching right now. Just, I mean, right, you're more of like gathering information for the next run, because um, a lot of these levels yes. are being redefined, and that's. I mean, I think that's what you should be doing right now, um, unless it has news, and that's coin. Like coin, and... would, coin would have been on my list this week because it's right at my fifty three eighty six. Um, but mm-hmm. I kind of let you lead the way there, um, but I. I said it Friday, like, I mean, if you have balls of steel buying that 45, you did really well on coin. Um, uh, yeah, and that was it. I mean, like, that's where it gapped down 20%, you know, overnight. And um, and this is why I think, you know, if you do if you do short these, you want that, you want a lot of time. And, and then you scalp calls when you get those big legs down. You don't watch it go down. 20% and then think it's going to go down 30%. Uh, so, and that's where a lot of people get, get trapped. So we're, um, yeah, we're in complete, complete agreement there. And, um, you know, MSTR put leaps, they're very expensive, but they get less expensive if you're just smart about not chasing puts on a bad day um, because it gets those, those three, five, eight, percent, eight percent recoveries. Um mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I mean, coin, uh, I, um, SEC could really do them in and it could take it down into the twenties. Um, but I don't think you can really time that or, 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 or plan for that. Um, so it's better, we got levels all the way down, so it's better to just, um, you know, trade the relief on the bad days. So I'm, I'm completely with you there. Yeah. 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 Again, you just gotta know what you're trading. You're not holding coin to a hundred, right? Uh, yeah, exactly right. It doesn't want it doesn't want a hundred. Um, the the people selling you calls want you to believe that. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Uh, doing good on time here. You ready to get to work? Yeah. <laughs>